I saw Mary Poppins in the Rialto Theatre Leightonstone with my grandmother. This is going back to the, the early 1700s. Supercalifragilistic, expialidocious, if you say it far. Anyway, Ryan Doyle, hello Ryan. You weren't born when I first saw Mary Poppins. Oh, it was a fantastic movie though. And, and I was quite precocious. And, and you know what, <laughs> many years later at uh, Private Eye magazine, it's a magazine in England, mm -hmm. whenever I go over they, they have their, their lunches. And uh, at the lunch, the guy who played the father uh, is it, was it Mr. Dahl? What was his name? The, oh. Anyway, well, he was there. He was about 110 <laughs> years old, but he was there. <laughs> and at, let's move on. Uh, Nanny State. Well, N Nels, I've never, I mean, I'll eat whatever. If it's there and it's not moving, I'll eat it, of course. Sure. Uh, that's my figure. But um, little evidence that sharp reductions in salt consumption will improve health. But for years now, we've been told that, that, that the consuming salt makes you a genocidal murderer. Well, the, well, that's exactly it. I mean, we've had the Canadian Medical Association. We've had all sorts of, you know, public officers of health, chief public officers of health, uh, come out with these warnings. They want labels. They want restrictions on people's diets. And lo and behold, well, of course, it doesn't, re wouldn't really do anything. At the end of the day, personal choice has to trump a lot of what these in the people in yeah, the medical but, community but, but, are but, talking but, about. But with information behind it. Absolutely. Um, uh, Omega-3, I, I take uh, those every day. But now there's a study that's saying that, yeah, they probably are good for heart and stroke, but they, they could lead to prostate cancer. Well, everything's got a yin and a yang to it, right? I mean, that's what that's it comes it. down to. I, if, you know, you, you, of prostate, you see those... Yeah. You, yeah. see, you see those ads on American television for things like cholesterol and that kind of yeah. stuff. If you pop that pill, well, yeah, it'll cure your cholesterol. Could lead to alien coming out of your stomach. Well, that's yeah. right, and sausage finger and all yeah. those other things. I mean, that is what you have to you know, research as a consumer. You have to look it up. You have to do your homework. But that's on us. That shouldn't be on government to continuously tell us what we need to do. And if we don't do it, then come up with laws to make us do it. I do completely it. agree with you. Government, we need to be told. We think of thalidomide, for example. You, Government, someone has to be there to say there's a danger involved here. Yes, we have to use our own responsibility and our own intelligence, but we need a certain information. I mean, if you're told by a lot of powerful people, this is fine, it's good for you. You're, you're being misinformed. But with, with, with salt, it was a consensus. You have to cut down. It's really bad for you. Now we're being told, uh, we may have got that completely wrong. Well, I think there's levels of danger as well. If it could be bad for you over a long period of time, well, maybe then just a warning and some information and let us decide as the public yeah. as to whether or not we want to take that. When we, we talk about other more serious things, of course, government does have a role in that, and they have rules to put out and warnings to put out to let us know that those things okay. aren't good for us and might kill us. Speaking of salt, I may be the only person who almost drowned in the Dead Sea. <laughs> I panicked. How did that happen? I panicked. <laughs> I'm not a very good swimmer, and I, and I was floating, and I panicked. And anyway, that's uh, for another show. Now, smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't like, I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I occasionally smoke a pipe, and if I really allowed it to happen, I, I could probably do too much smoking of a pipe. But I hate smoking cigarettes, um, but it's not for me to tell other people what to do. Certain controls and restric restrictions are okay, but now they're saying, ban it. This is Toronto. This is Toronto. Ban it everywhere. So it's okay. Um, very, very dangerous forms of sexual activity. Don't say a word about uh, cannabis. That's terrific. No, no carcinogens there. Even free heroin. But don't you dare smoke a cigarette. Yeah, this is getting ridiculous. I mean, I support the idea of not smoking inside of bars or restaurants. Mm. Obviously, there are staff there that will have uh, long-lasting implications on their health if you're around smokers that long. But when we talk about the idea of smoking in front of public buildings, they now want smokers to go nine meters in front of the building, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's not going to stop people from smoking on the sidewalk. They'll just now be nine meters further ahead than they were before. The smoke will still be there. Fair way. But it, when you go into a restaurant, if people are, are smoking right outside, it is going to go in the door. You do smoke as you go in. They're there often for shelter in our climate. When it's sunny, it doesn't really matter. But otherwise, they're going to be going to be under something. I mean, it, it could well be that outside the Sun News building, there may be people who smoke. Well, just let's let them smoke then. I mean, how long are you lingering around the people that are smoking? You're walking by, you're trying to get into your office building. That takes, what, one, two seconds? Yeah. How much smoke can you actually inhale in that amount of time? Not much is the answer to that question. No, it's, you about com it's, it's not about health anymore. It's about comfort. It's, I do not want any way that's to right. be challenged by people who have a different lifestyle from mine. Well, and that's the thing. When you talk about patios, because this law would include patios as well, uh, where somebody, you know, the smokers 
have been basically shunned to sitting outside and smoking, and now government thinks yeah. they've got control of the air that we breathe. I don't buy that. I think it's a business decision. If you're a restaurant owner, bar owner, you don't want smoking on your patio, that's your decision. You should have that choice as to what kind of clientele you want. It should not be up to government to say, well, you can't smoke out there in front of that restaurant. There's a certain political and psychological schizophrenia about all this, because simultaneously we say, you know, smoking is bad, but can, uh, tobacco use is deeply problematic. Mm -hmm. um, it is. Occasional, maybe not an issue, but regular use is not a good thing. We don't know very much about cannabis at this stage. The, the, the notion that you take in a substance that alters, alters fundamentally your body, body chemistry, your, your brain chemistry, for a period of time, that there's no link to cancer and carcinogens, I think is naive. A Absolutely. lot of doctors are now saying, if you have any potential for psychosis, this increases. But beyond that, in the 50s, as late as the 60s, we still thought cigarettes were, were, were maybe even healthy for mm -hmm. us. So on the one hand, we get uh, twits like Trudeau saying, well, I think it, it's absolutely fine, isn't it, even though his mother suffered from it. So cannabis is trendy, and it's the middle classes. Cigarette smoking is more working class people, blue collar workers. That has to be completely marginalized. You're a parar if you indulge. Yeah, and it's interesting you bring that up because there are people, I've walked by them, and I think Trudeau empowers these type of people that will walk down the sidewalk now yeah. and smoke a joint. They'll, they'll be openly doing it. No one will give them a hard time. I've seen them walk by police officers. Police look the other way in that circumstance. So you're telling me now we're going to live in a society where police officers are cracking down on smokers because they might be eight meters in front of mm. a building and not nine, but not the person that's smoking a product that isn't legal. Yet. Yeah. Of course, Churchill smoked cigars all the time, including in cabinet with all the other politicians. The person he was fighting, won't say his name, banned smoking from anywhere in the building. <gasps> Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, sir.